Here I'm testing just the resonance of the secondary and the, its top load on its own, which is a, an LC tank. And so I've got the positive from my function generator attached to the bottom tail of the coil there. And then the negative and the ground of my oscilloscope are connected together. So they're both at ground potential. And then the positive is just floating there above the auditoriators. Then when it gets to the resonant frequency, I should see a marked increase in the voltage that the scope probe sees. <coughs> Starting off at about 10 kilohertz. So even at that it's producing a signal. The scope's just set to 100 millivolts at the moment. See, it really starts to ramp up when it gets to the resonant frequency. Pop that down to it's 500 millivolts. Oop, there we go, so the leaps up and back again, so the frequency is somewhere between 580 and 590. Pop that down. Oh, we're even going to exceed that scale. So that's a 1 volt per div, so that's 2 volts in the air roughly. A little bit finer now, just still looking for that peak, and it seems to be there at about 584. Not bad, I was aiming for somewhere in the 400 to 600 kilohertz range, and there we go. Testing out with the primary, and I've just got the function generator generator attached straight across that now. Uh, the tail of the secondary is attached to the earth on the scope probe and then the tip of that is just floating in the air and uh, I'm going to start off at the 584 kHz that it resonated at last time and see where we go. So we've got a signal but uh, the inductance will have gone up a little bit introducing that new coil, so if we drop the frequency a bit there we go, there's about the peak so we're down to 567 kilohertz not too bad I've varnished up the secondary and put a breakout point on the top there and I've replaced the other driven uh, oscillator with, uh, can't really see it very well here, it's the Slayer Exciter, it's basically a very simple, just a transistor, a diode and a resistor and it takes feedback from the secondary of here to lock onto the resonant frequency. Uh, it's not a bad little driver, it's, um, it'll produce something. Uh, I found if I give it about 12 volts It'll light up this little fluorescent here. Uh, sorry, this is a little tiny neon tube. They use, they use 90 volts to light up, but obviously this is nowhere near that. My scope probe's picking up about, uh, let's see, 6 volts peak to peak at that distance there. Um, but it'll also put some light into the CFL. So. Yeah, it's definitely working. And give it some more volts. I've got out the monster rectifier so I can give it a bit more voltage. Um, just using the same little Slayer driver. It's a TIP 35C as the transistor there, which is rated up to 100 volts. Uh, from previous experience, so it'll probably blow up at around 80 volts. So I found 70 is, seems to be a good compromise between not dying and. Uh, giving reasonable output. It heats up a little bit, but it's not too bad. And just got the old poor man's high voltage probe sitting in the air. It's about like eight centimeters or so from the toroid. And the scope there, and just a few toys to play with.
So we're about 70 in. It starts to get a bit of corona discharge off the breakout point there. And uh, quite happily light up CFL from so fully lit about probably 15 centimeters away. Not too bad. And it'll quite happily light up my big fluorescent. No problem at all. It uh, actually starts to get a little bit warm in my hand where I'm touching it. And it'll activate my plasma globe. Can you see that? And again, where I'm touching it, it is noticeably warm. So, only drawing just over half an amp. It actually draws less when I've got this in there than it does idling. That's 70 volts and about nearly three quarters of an amp. Locked on to 572 kilohertz, which is pretty close to what I was getting when I was just messing around on my own. Yeah, that works. Now let's try putting a proper driver on it. Okay, so set up with a slightly different driver here. Well, very different driver in fact. Uh, this is a, it's not a Mazzilli driver. Normally a Mazzilli will only have one of these large inductors and you'll need a centre tap coil. Um, so instead of that, this has two feeder inductors and it only requires two output connections, um, but the basic geometry of the rest of it and how it works is pretty much the same. Um, and it'll lock onto the resonant frequency of my <laughs> string of caps here. I ran out of those before I got to the frequency I wanted, and just the primary. The secondary tail is connected to my large RF ground, which I use on my big coil, and the other end is obviously just free to air there. And then I've got my oscilloscope connected with uh, two channels and a differential. And then the purple line in the middle is the A minus B, which will be the waveform itself across the caps. And I've done that because I don't have a floating power supply. I'm using my uh, Variac and the, the large bridge rectifier there. I'm only feeding it about 20 volts at the moment just to get an idea. I wanted to try and get the uh, resonant circuit here to lock onto the same frequency as the secondary at about 567 kilohertz. Um, by adding caps here slowly slowly this is now down to 22 nanofarads and my frequency is up to 550 kilohertz which is close but um, still not close enough. I'm giving it about 20 volts in which is uh, getting to just over 100 volts peak to peak in the primary tank here, but uh, it'll light up the CFL, but nowhere near as strong as it was with uh, just the 70 volts from the Slayer exciter. And that's currently, you see, when I bring the light bulb in, the frequency drops down to 530 kilohertz, which is just so far off the 567 or 560 or so that the secondary needs that. It's, it works, but it's not as good as I would hoped. Um, unfortunately, these, because the coil is so small, they're uh, quite finicky about their frequency. And see, it'll light up the, the big fluorescent fairly well, but this thing doesn't actually take that much to light for some reason. The smaller one actually is more difficult. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think I need to drop the size of my cap bank here probably by half. I'm going to try and get some 10, uh, well a string that will add up to 10 nanofarads and uh, see if that's any better. But otherwise I might have to go for a beefier single resonant design. We'll see.